Hello, Redneck Computer Geek here. We've done a ton of engine experiments over the course of the last couple of years. One of them was we took a Chinesium Amazon flywheel and we bought a ring gear off NR Racing and created a racing electric start flywheel in a recent video. You know, being able to make a $50 flywheel that's the same as a $220 racing flywheel, that's not too bad of an experiment. This, on the other hand, this is just outright stupid just to see if we can make it even start up and run. This is a PLA 3D printed flywheel. And this has been a saga that you guys have helped out with a ton on the Facebook page. So here's the breakdown. First, we had to come up with making a collar that had the correct um, tapered shaft for a Rado crank or a GX200. That wasn't too bad. That took me about four tries and I got that figured out. I then had to figure out where to line up the pin for the cup. And then I had to figure out the angle of the flywheel key versus the magnet. That's not too difficult. That designed up quite easily. But then, I needed a magnet. And so a lot of people said, three flywheels worth of me breaking stuff later, that maybe if you heated up the flywheel, that this would let go and you could be able to unscrew it. Instead, that demagnetized the first flywheel. Then we ended up with the, hey, what if you take a... Um, what if you take a saw and you try to cut down through the side of this in order to remove the magnet? That didn't work either. That, it, that broke another magnet. A third flywheel later, I tried to chisel down through and we ended up breaking another magnet. So I'm three flywheels dead in the water. And so I post up another picture to the Facebook group. And about 60 comments later, I get an email with a link to Ally Express. $30 per magnet, so I'm $60 into this idea. We managed to order up replacement magnets for GX200 flywheels. So I'm three broken flywheels, $60 in, plus the PLA and design time. Then we run into the next issue. The next issue is a flywheel is supposed to be balanced. So if I put this on here, and then you put that on there, that is not balanced. And so I posted up another question to the Facebook page, and that blew up with about 1,500 comments and a whole bunch of argument about how stupid I am to even try this. But out of that, we ended up with a brilliant idea of Wally World wheel weights. So I ordered up a very generic set of stick-on wheel weights, and through trial and error in a couple of attempts, we now have a flywheel that is a lot more balanced, but not very well balanced. So at this point, once it starts to spin on there, it actually balances out pretty good. And that brings us to where we're at now. The question is not, how long will this, well, no, the question is, how long will this last? Will it even run? One of the ongoing arguments about flywheels is whether the weight actually has to do with whether the engine will run. These weigh in at a little over five pounds. A ultralight racing flywheel weighs in at two pounds. This weighs in at a grand total of 12 ounces. It is less than a pound. So the question is, will the flywheel weight being that low cause it to not even start in the first place? All right, that's enough talking, enough background. Let's go try this on an engine. Our first hurdle is actually not even trying to start it. Our first hurdle is whether we can actually tighten down on it without cracking the whole stupid thing. I picked a cup that had a really wide brim and this lip on it, so that, that way I could wrap a rope on it. That way we can see the flywheel when everything goes to hell. So, 
I'm just gonna put a very decent but not overly extensive tightening on it. Still tightening, still finding, no, still, right there. Okay, I can't argue with it and tighten it any further. So now we're gonna rotate it and set up this coil. We actually had to trim the edge of the coil in order to make this fit because Go figure the aftermarket Chinesium magnet is actually a little bit tall. Not gonna lie, I'm nervous for this one. We've got our death camera here. We've got this wrapped up. I'm gonna give it a yank. Choke is on. See if it's gonna start or it isn't. Whoop, wait a minute. I have to do that YouTuber thing where you're supposed to go down and you're supposed to comment down below. Is it gonna work? How long is it gonna work? and what is going to fail. Now, John seems to think everything is gonna go blowing out this way. I think just because my luck sucks, it's all gonna go straight through the coil and into my brand spanking new carburetor. Comment down below, you ready? Joke off. I don't think I can actually get it to spin fast enough to, to trigger because the flywheel doesn't weigh enough. Temp number three, no choke. I haven't heard any kind of fire off this thing yet. Gap set way less than it was before, take two. I got no spark at all. Either that magnet is junk or the coil died on us. All right, let's see if Chrome gets us home. I see no spark at all. Let me get my fat head across it so there's a shadow. Now let's try. All right, John, look up at me. This is the face of a $100 defeat. Um, all I can think... I got really scared when I ordered these magnets off of AliExpress because there were a lot of reviews, probably about a third of them, that said the, ba said the magnet was bad or didn't work or died or whatever. And... I took a gamble, and I think my gamble cost me $60. I don't know, guys. I think this one's done for. Yeah. John and I have decided we're going to put the 5-pound flywheel on just to make sure that nothing's wrong with the engine or something happened. It ran last night, so it should be fine. But I wanted to show the flex. I definitely got the taper right. I'm trying, and it's not coming off. <laughs> I, I genuinely... Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it didn't chew into the keyway at all, and you can see the taper marks going down through. So I definitely got the taper correct. I don't know. Let's put the original back on, let's make sure the engine runs, and that it really was our homemade flywheel that screwed up. I can't imagine this being the problem. Maybe it's a bit poetic that this engine just threw my flywheel that I made on the ground because I think it's garbage. There is 
a lot of argument that the reason why a racing flywheel on these engines cannot be less than two pounds. And I think we've actually ended up in that argument. I think that John and I actually did a quick experiment. We put this on and we tried to pull the engine over and really could only catch about one or two sparks. And it actually sparked a couple of times, two or three times after the rope was long off of the pole. So this has to have enough momentum that it actually gets two or three sparks past the pole rope. And this obviously does not give it that much momentum. I think that's where we're at. I think that they already figured out there's a two pound limit on getting these things to start and that we're below that and we're screwed because of it. Thanks for watching and hope I didn't waste too much of your time.